With my pencil, I can imagine anything. Like a beach. Palm trees hold up my cozy hammock, and my beloved pet cat idly lounges on top. You see, we know a pencil writes with graphite. Not copper or bronze or zinc, they won't sketch what you think, and don't be fooled by lead, it'll show you nothing that can be read. Why is graphite the only one to write? Well, graphite's a little different. It forms as stacks and stacks of carbon, which are weakly connected to one another. So unlike the sturdy structure of, say, diamond, the layers of graphite flake apart at the slide of your hand. But as I wake up from my bi-weekly atomic structure daydream, I realize I've scratched my cat far too hard. I need to lighten up this moody furball. In fact, let's make the shade so light, it's just one single layer of graphite. How can we leave just one layer of graphite on my sheet of paper? Well, my eraser will probably just take away everything, but maybe if we're delicate enough, we can peel away the layers of carbon using scotch tape. As the graphite sticks to the tape and gets pulled away, the shading gets lighter and lighter. And there you have it, if you're careful enough. One layer of graphite, more commonly known as graphene, a structure strong enough to hold up a four kilogram cat, and yet so thin, we can't even see it. The first scientist to use this scotch tape technique won the 2010 Physics Nobel Prize. A Nobel Prize for simply peeling off pencil marks with scotch tape. And here at the Max Planck Institute for Solid State Research, one of the mysteries we're currently exploring is graphene. We've got dozens of scientists studying, essentially, pencil marks. Corolla here is one of those scientists. Graphene is a very unique material because the electrons inside are extremely mobile and thus electric current can easily flow through. This makes graphene an amazing conductor, much better than the copper or silicon which are found in computers today. Being so small and so strong, graphene computers would be the size of a hair, phones the size of credit cards. Because of this, graphene may be the perfect candidate for future electronics, but one important thing is missing, the ability to become insulating, like silicon. Silicon chips are made up of tiny little switches. When the switch is set to conducting, it lets an electrical signal through. But when we switch it to insulating, it stops the signal. Right now, graphene can only conduct. And Corolla is working hard to see if graphene will ever be able to make that important switch to insulating. But before she can study this problem, she needs to make her own graphene. And luckily, she doesn't need scotch tape. She uses this an ultra-high vacuum chamber with a pressure comparable to space. She places a mixture of silicon and carbon into the chamber, and when the pressure gets low enough, she heats this silicon carbide up to a staggering 1200 degrees Celsius. Eventually, the silicon evaporates from the mixture and we're left with epitaxial graphene, whose electrical properties are a lot easier for Corolla to study. And now it sits on a slightly thicker platform. But it is a pretty cool idea that you can make something so thin that it becomes invisible. In fact, graphene, being just one layer of atoms thick, is so thin, it's considered two-dimensional. So graphene is just surface that makes it very sensitive to the outside world. Uh, let's say we want to detect some pollutants in air, yeah? When these gases react with the standard 3D sensor, they do so only on the outside. So you don't get so much of a strong sensor signal from such sensors. But when these gases hit graphene, which is a 2D material, the entire structure, so every single atom is exposed. This makes graphene an incredible sensor. And this is one of the things we are focusing here at our institute in Stuttgart. We are trying to use graphene to detect biomolecules which are produced by viruses and bacteria in our body. So using such devices, we hope that we can diagnose diseases earlier and faster. And we are now making fundamental steps trying to figure out how these structures work and why. Two decades ago, 2D structures were no more than an abstract idea. In fact, it was a well-accepted fact that 2D structures are probably far too unstable to exist. Until they experimented, scientists didn't know graphene could be isolated, yet alone that it would have all these useful properties. They just wondered, how thin could we get a pencil mark? <laughs> 